Hi guys, welcome to the second part of this uh, episode related uh, with the phenomenon of uh, corrosion. In this particular case is uh, in a Sun Dancer that a wonderful sea ray. Uh, this is about in great condition, but uh, we found that some uh, corrosion issues. Uh, we solved the corrosion issues. In this episode, we are going to try to explain step by step how was the process. If you remember in the previous episode, we found that, that uh, in the pedestal, um, the readings are not good. You remember the reading that uh, we found that in that pedestal, the reading in between hot uh, and neutral was 118.4 and uh, the reading in between hot and ground was 115.1. The difference between both readings is 118.4 minus 115.1 is more than three volts. This is not good. The recommendation is if that difference is more than two volts, this is an indication that the ground is not good. The ground is not good in this particular case, the ground of the pedestal, the ground of the marine. What happened when the ground is not good? Some currents are flowing through the ground. If my boat is connected, the short power, to that ground, to that pedestal, that ground contaminated affect my boat because those currents enter in my boat and flow in the bonding, in the grounding of my boat. This is not good because if the ground of my, normally through the ground should be zero volt. If you have three point something, this is not good. If additionally, some equipments in the boat are wrong connected, that current in the ground affect those appliances, those equipments. If additionally, for some reason, in a boat, internally in the boat, the ground and the neutral is together, this is catastrophic. Because in this particular case, if you have three point some volts flowing to the ground, those voltage are flowing, flowing through the neutral. And this is not good. If additionally you have reverse polarity, this, the situation is more catastrophic like I explained in other of, of my videos, why reverse polarity is catastrophic. But in this particular case, we have the situation that the ground is not good, that excessive voltage through the ground accelerate the corrosion internally. And if you remember in the previous episode, we found that a lot of corrosion in different parts of the boat in the block, in the motor mounts, in the sea strainers, uh, in the fuel filter of the generator, in the case of the generator, this is not good. What was my recommendation in the previous video? Number one, install a galvanic isolator. You remember in the previous episode, we passed hours try, trying to identify where was located the galvanic isolator, no galvanic isolator. This is why we uh, install in this episode a new galvanic isolator. Don't forget, the capacity of the galvanic isolator in amps should be in accordance with the main breaker in amps, in this particular case, 60 amps. We bought a great galvanic isolator and uh, we installed the galvanic isolator. Uh, was a nice process, uh, remember, what is the, the procedure? Identify where is entering uh, the short power cable. This Y bucket is where the short power enter. After, after the power is collected over there, the current enter in those two breakers. In this particular boat, there are two breakers. One breaker for double phase and other breaker for single phase. When I opened the box of the breakers, I found that, that uh, the ground was interrupted originally on those red terminals with the idea of uh, install the galvanic isolator in between both grounds. But they never install the galvanic isolator and they bypass both grounds with those red connectors. This is exactly the evidence that uh, in the boat there is not a galvanic isolator. Yes, we cut it. We cut it both terminals and now we have two cables uh, on top one green, other a little blue. Those are the green cables entering, entering in the wiring of the boat. And the two small ones, green ones, are the, the ground 
entering from the short power. Okay, we put together both of them on top and both of them in the bottom. Both of them in the bottom will be entering in the input of the galvanic isolator and the other one on top should be entering in the, in the output of the galvanic isolator. And that's it, we did that connection as you can see in both sides and now the galvanic isolator is properly installed. Great, we have galvanic isolator right now. What is the meaning of that? Right now, we can connect our boat in any part, in any pedestal, doesn't matter if the ground of the pedestal is contaminated or not, if the ground of the marina is good or, or not good. Doesn't matter if the neighbor boat have leaks of current, my boat is protected because right now we have that filter the galvanic isolator. Remember, the function of the galvanic isolator is block the intrusion of bad currents coming from the pedestal through the ground. Okay? This is, uh, this is exactly the situation that we have right now, and right now we have galvanic isolator. Uh, we hope that uh, the rest of the problem will be solved. And uh, remember that uh, the owner of the boat, they, they put the boat out of the water to do some service in the, in the bottom. They paint the bottom, uh, they clean the bottom, uh, they replace the external sacrificial anodes, uh, they did some preparation in the, in the seals of uh, the stuffing box of boat engines. Uh, they eliminate uh, sources of uh, water coming in in the engine room. Uh, when we enter in the boat after those reparations, we found that the majority of uh, the bonding cables, for example, those bonding connectors to the sea strainer for the engines, broken, completely broken, the terminal separated, broken. Uh, we, we found that in the, in the transom, the cable uh, connecting the bonding conductor with the external sacrificial anodes, those bolts completely, completely corroded. Remember that this boat have uh, two main bonding conductors, one in the transom and other in the middle. That one in the middle was broken. We replaced all of those cables, all of those cables, all cables, with those red uh, terminals, no marine grade, for new cables with uh, marine grade terminals and heat stream, proper protected. And this is the new bonding conductor in the middle. In the back, we clean and we replace a lot of cables. Now we have a new bonding conductor and a galvanic isolator. Additionally, we, uh, we check the bonding conductor of each metallic element inside of the engine room. We added new bonding conductors in between the block and the transmission for, uh, for port engine. And, uh, and the bonding conductor, you see, we pass a new, new bonding conductor. It's a big job with new terminals, new connections. Uh, that was the original, original terminal was corroded. We clean, we remove the ball in between the engine and the transmission. We clean the ball, we, we clean the connection, and we install in that point an extra bonding conductor. And we did the same in the other engine, in the starboard engine and we connect both engines and transmission to the middle bonding conductor. And the middle bonding conductor with the backward and the backwards with the sacrificial anodes. We pass a new cable uh, from the frame of the air condition unit. That ball, the original ball was corroded, the area corroded, we clean the area. We create a new cable, we pass the new cable and we connect the new cable to the bonding conductor. We did the same uh, with the fuel filter for the generator, do you remember? Originally, it doesn't have a bonding connection. I analyzed where should be the path to pass that cable in between the filter and the bonding conductor. We installed that cable, new one, and now the filter is bonded. We discovered that uh, internally in the generator, the bonding conductor was broken. That one was the bonding conductor internally. Completely broken, saturated. We create a new one 
and we connect the new one in the button of the generator and now the generator is properly protected. We did the same with a lot of elements inside of the boat. And, uh, and after that, we use again uh, the silver chlorine electrode. Uh, we introduced the silver chlorine electrode in the water with Danny and uh, with the, our multimeter in DC, voltage DC, uh, we start with the new readings. Uh, remember that uh, a good reading in the page 89 of uh, my book of uh, marine corrosion, we have the table. And uh, a proper connection should be in, uh, in between minus 0 0.8 and minus 0 0.95. Uh, remember that uh, in the previous episode, a lot of, of those readings are out of the range. Now I am happy because all of those, all of the readings are exactly in the range. We check again the voltage in between uh, the strainers and the bonding conductor, minus 0 0.93, minus 0 0.94 the reading on the block of the engines in both block of engines minus 0 0.91 94 uh, the reading in in the bracket of the air conditioning equipment minus 0 0.91 94 the reading of the on the generator exactly the same the reading on uh, the filter of uh, uh, the fuel filter for uh, the generator exactly the same in the ranch we verify all the readings all of them right now are in the ranch. This is great. I am happy because we solved the problem. Do you remember in the previous uh, episode uh, we entered in the in the AC panel and we found that a couple of uh, breakers, a couple of equipments in red color with the alarm. And now we enter, we turn on uh, uh, the AC power, and we verify that all of those. AC equipments are in green color, any of them in red, any of them in the three page of the AC, the water heater, refrigerators, the cockpit area. You remember in the in the first one the cockpit area have a chart. Right now the cockpit area is, is in green color. All of them are in green color. Of course I check again with the chur test and the readings were Perfect, perfect. No reverse polarity, no charts, and now the engine room and the cabin and the boat, the entire boat is in great condition. This is a perfect example how to solve corrosion problems in a boat. This is the this is the, the procedure. Don't forget in the future when you have corrosion issues in a boat, number one check the pedestal. Number two, verify the condition of the bonding system in your boat. Verify that you have an existing bonding conductor. Verify that the bonding conductor is connected ex with, the, with the sacrificial anodes. Remember in a previous boat, in other boat, I verified that that bonding conductor was disconnected from that bulb. This is the bulb that externally is connected with the sacrificial anodes. I found that with other of uh, my students, other of my customers, those bulbs separated, indicating that uh, the, the things, the sacrificial anodes outside are doing nothing. This is uh, number three. Uh, number four, verify that you have a galvanic isolator and verify that the galvanic isolator is in good condition. You remember the procedure I explain that process in a, in, in a lot of uh, short videos that I have, how to check a galvanic isolator. Try try to check those, those episodes. Okay, after that, verify that the ground boost bar in the AC panel and the negative boost bar in the DC panel, both of them are connected with the bonding conductor. You remember that picture uh, in, that is in my book. Okay, those both negative boost bar and ground boost bar should be connected to the bonding conductor and connected outside to the sink. Verify that you don't have reverse polarity in, in the panel. That's very, very important. And always, always, always check your boat with two equipments, the silver chlorine electrode and the gloss meter, the gloss meter. That said, that said this is the process. 
and of course verify that all the hardware you use it in your boat is marine grade. It's not magnetic. It's marine grade uh, ferrous alloys and marine grade non ferrous alloys. This is the process, my friend. And finally, verify that the sacrificial anodes used in your boat are the proper sacrificial anodes for your boat. Remember that uh, uh, you can select the sacrificial anodes using one of my posters. And uh, with those with the, those uh, uh, recommendations uh, and uh, some uh, information about the type of water, uh, the material of the hull, uh, you can select uh, the sacrificial anode recommended for, uh, for your boat. If it's uh, aluminum, sacrificial anode, or magnesium, or zinc, depend of those factors. If it's in war, if it's uh, 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 fiberglass or aluminum or metallic hull uh, or wood and uh, if the boat is in salt water, in fresh water, in brackish water you follow that poster and you can select the proper uh, sacrificial panel. Okay guys, uh, if you enjoy this episode please, I appreciate if you say thank you or uh, if you make a click, you say uh, approve it uh, this is the only way to survive and continue supporting uh, this channel and uh, continue creating uh, more material for you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope this episode be useful for you in the future. Thank you.